Salutations, everyone, and thank you for watching episode 34 of DiabeticRadio.com. Uh, many episodes ago, I think it was episode 5, I showed you how to extract insulin from your insulin pens um, into a syringe for um, cases of an emergency. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to extract insulin from your insulin pens into your pump reservoir um, or pump cartridge. Um, I'm also going to show you how to um, extract insulin from your uh, pump cartridge into a syringe. Now, the reason why this, I believe, is very important is because, let's say, you're going out on a short trip. You're not going out long. You're not going to bring your whole diabetes bag because it's just not necessary. Um, and you're out to dinner with some friends and you realize your pump has malfunctioned and it's not delivering any insulin. Um, well, if you at least carry a syringe with you, uh, you can still deliver what insulin is left in the pump cartridge um, via syringe um, until you can get home and and um, follow your old um, injection regimen until you get your pump fixed. Now, uh, I, I think that this, uh, I, I should point out that this is, the, this is a method that I personally use for myself. This is something that's not um, uh, encouraged by any insulin um, company or by animus. This is something that is strictly, you know, um, my own method of um, getting insulin out in the event of an emergency. And, and, I be, and I really think that this is something very important to know because uh, you and I both know who, you know, those of us who are insulin um, dependent, in a matter of hours, your sugars can creep up anywhere from 200, 300, 400 uh, milligrams per deciliter. And when your sugars are that high, you're feeling sick, you're throwing up, your body feels like it's been hit with a mat truck. Um, you're not thinking about what the instruction book says. You're not thinking about what animus, you know, told you, you know, the proper way of doing things. All you know is that you're sick as a dog, you can't get to the hospital, or if you get to a hospital, I don't know about you guys, but here in New York City, our hospitals are always busy. So, which means that you go into the emergency room one night, um, truth be told, if you're not laying down on the floor convulsing with foam coming out of your mouth, no one is going to touch you until the next, like, 48 hours. So you can avoid all that mess um, by knowing how to extract insulin from your um, cartridge into a syringe so that you can deliver your uh, insulin and um, your, your, you can get to control your sugars so they can stay on level and avoid yourself um, going into the hospital. Before so I start, I should talk a little bit about refrigeration. Um, insulin companies will tell you that uh, a rapid-acting insulin can um, be used up to 30 days and a longer-acting insulin could be used up to 45 days. The truth of the matter is you can use your insulin a lot longer than that. For as long as, as you keep it in the fridge, especially during the hot summer, you don't want to leave it out because the, the, the heat um, degrades the insulin. Uh, the reason why manufacturers tell you you can only use it for 30 days is because once you use it, um, they really can't guarantee the, um, I don't know what word to use, like the, the freshness of it. But um, for as long as you don't reuse needles, um, there's no reason why um, you can't still use that insulin after 30 days. Um, if you get a brand new insulin um, today, prescription today, and the expiration date says uh, 2012, there's no reason why you can't use it after 12, uh, 30 days or 45 days um, after uh, the first 
uh, use. Before you extract your insulin, you want to make sure that when you take out your insulin pen that it's out at room temperature at least about uh, two hours because a cold insulin uh, causes um, air pockets. Now this, uh, I don't know how this rumor started, but um, a lot of people seem to think that if there's a little air um, in a syringe or in a tube that uh, you'll die if you, you know, keep the air in there. You won't die. Uh, what it is, it's more of a concern that um, you misdose yourself rather than uh, harm coming. You know, it's not like it's a huge, big, you know, bubble of air. Tiny little bubbles won't harm you. Um, but you don't want too many because then there's that risk of you misdosing yourself and thinking that your sugars are on point and in actuality they're higher than they should be because um, you didn't give yourself the dose, the correct dose that you wanted because of the air pockets. So um, we're going to take out our pen. We're going to pull the uh, needle out of the cartridge. Uh, you want to make sure that because this is the pen, you do not shoot air into the pen. The way that it's designed, you don't need to shoot air into the pen. So you make sure that the animus uh, plunger, I guess it's called, that it's all the way back to the end. You do not, you do not have it like this and push air into it. No. If you do that, you can. You know, I don't know how sturdy this glass is. I don't want anyone taking the risk of pushing air and, and this um, breaking or cracking. Um, plus, there's a, there's a mechanism in here that when you turn this, it pushes the rubber downward. So if you push air into this, all it's going to do is push the insulin back behind the rubber piece and you'll actually lose insulin. So it's very important to uh, keep that in mind. So now I stick the needle into the um, insulin pen. You can't see this, but um, in between this black band, there's a, there's a space here. Uh, so when you extract the insulin, there, there will be a little air. So you have to most definitely push um, the cartridge all the way back in to get rid of that air. So you hold the, uh, the tip of the insulin pen with the two hands like a cigarette, right? You take the other, uh, what is this, the third uh, finger and a thumb and you hold the cartridge. Okay, like so, and then you take the other hand, the free hand, and you pull the cartridge down. Okay, so now remember when I said about the air pockets, I don't know if you can see uh, in the camera, there's that air pocket there. So now I'm going to push the, inst the uh, uh, blue uh, holder thingy all the way back up in. And you see, saw that, so the air coming out. So now we pull it back down. You tap it, make sure that there's no other air pockets. Make sure you look in this area too, because sometimes air develops there. Push it all the way in. And now you should be good to go. You pull this. And there you go. And now you're ready to use your insulin um, from the cartridge in your pump. Now I'm going to show you how to extract insulin from your insulin cartridge in the event that your pump malfunctions into your uh, syringe. So you should always make sure that you at least carry your syringe with you um, if you're in a pump. And some glucose tablets, of course. Uh, so now what we're going to do is uh, open the syringe. Now this is tricky. Um, it can take some practice. 
Um, again, hold the cartridge uh, like a cigarette. Okay, use your thumb to push the bottom up to get the insulin. You carefully, because this is very thin, you carefully stick the, uh, the syringe in. And um, you have to be very careful because these syringes are very delicate. They can easily bend. And then you take your other two fingers like a cigarette and you pull this up and push your um, thumb upwards so that as you're extracting pulling this up and extracting the insulin takes a little bit of practice you see it takes a little bit of practice but you can do it Okay. Take a little bit more insulin than you normally would take so that you can um, account for the air. You just tap it and push the air up. Okay, and there you have it. Okay, this is a great way of preventing yourself from being in an emergency room unnecessarily. I hope this video has been beneficial to you. And I look forward to making my next video. Bye-bye now.